For the starting woodworker, this is a great bench. It comes from dimensional lumber you can get at a Home Depot and uses very minimal tools. It's not very difficult to put together and I'm going to show you exactly what you need for to move, like materials, uh, tools, everything for this $150 workbench. Hey guys, so what we're going to do here is show you the 3D model of the actual workbench or how it's going to be when we get it finished. As you can see, it is 48 inches long by 24 inches deep and it is 33 inches tall. That's about an inch and a half shorter than a normal workbench because I'm going to be putting a just a leveling feet on the bottom just because my floor in the garage is not totally level. Uh, four by four frame, uh, well, sorry, four by four legs, two by four frame, and then four pieces of plywood to make a three inch top plus a sacrificial hardboard for the top as well and then an MDF shelf. Let's go ahead and get this thing built. This is the cut list for the bench. As you can see, we need four two by fours and two four by fours from Home Depot, about the usual eight foot length. You're gonna have some leftover four by four, but that's okay. Minimal loss on the two by fours. For the top, as you can see, the plywood top is using a four by eight shape cut into quarters. And that's pretty easy. Uh, you can get whatever kind you like. I went and splurged and got the decent plywood as well as a hardwood top, which is right there. That's the hardwood top uh, again. And also that's just showing the size you would need for the MDF shelf. Now, if you don't want to cut your own plywood and you don't have the tools for it, Home Depot does. If you're really cool with the guy who's manning the lumber yard, they can actually cut the whole thing for you on their big old radial slaw. So as you see, I, that's, my, that's the regular eight by four sheet of plywood I bought. It's a lot cheaper to have them cut it this way than you yourself. And if you're really cool with them, you can have them cut all the legs and all of the four by fours for you too. This guy was super cool and I really appreciated it because it saved me having to buy a circular saw for right now. In order to get started, just put a regular old folding table is all I used. Nice part is it's the same dimensions as my work piece. So it's just one piece and I'm going to start the lamination process. I had to clean up the edges because the Home Depot saw really took a lot of chunks out of the edge, but it won't really matter because this is our first workbench, right? We're not going for perfect angles, perfect everything. At least I wasn't. If it was off by a 16th, I really didn't care on the edge. So just clamp the two pieces together because we want to make sure at least one corner is nice and plumb and then use that one corner to base the rest of our pieces off. Now one of the added security of having screws, so I laid out an, a, like a grid on the actual top itself on the first half because I'm only able to do two pieces together. I did it in half at the 24 mark, then measured out a foot on each direction, and then to be able to get the edge, because we need the edge really important, right? Otherwise we're gonna be totally toasted. Uh, and on top of this, I do it every six inches in order to get that. So I just use the width of the ruler in order to get a grid around the outside. It's very important to countersink each of the screw heads because what I'm doing is drilling a countersink hole each time the grid makes a cross because that's where we're going to go. There's about a total of 25 screws that will be used for each half. Remember, this is only two pieces of the plywood and then we glue it together and screw it. Now that your grid is laid out, you have to take off the top piece because we got to actually laminate the things together with some glue. Now make sure that when you start this process that there's all the dust is off. Now here it is dumped tons and tons of glue. I use probably about 16 ounces on each side. So you're going to go through a ton. Use an old piece of cardboard just to kind of wipe it around. You need to make sure that it goes a nice even coat all the way around and that there is no wood showing, just glue. Now line up that one corner. Remember that one corner we talked about earlier, how critical it was to make sure it was square? Put in your screws and start from the, the middle, working your way outwards. That way you'll squeeze all the glue toward the outside and you'll have a very, very even nice clamp. This is good. Now what we need to do is start laying out for both of the pieces to come together. So in this case, we have both of our laminates together. Line them up like we would using one of the corners as a true. And now because we already had the grid lines created from the first lamination, all we're doing is splitting the difference and making lines down the middle. So that way we are not going to hit any of the other screws. Same with the outside. If you need to, you can use that one and a half inch line that we already did. Make sure to get yourself your countersink and just start going it every single time. Because again, we're pulling off this top because we have to put the glue down. Again, this was a ton of glue being used, but it was well worth it to be able to make sure that we had a perfectly good bond between this, the top, because we're basically trying to create a big three inch slab of wood. 
and this is a great way to do it. I use some reference lines on the left just to make sure everything was lined up. And then again, start from the middle, work your way out. These are two and a half inch screws. So that way I'd be able to hit every piece of the wood with the screw and they're all countersunk so that we have a nice flat place. Look at that, boom. And to finish up the top, I'm using a sacrificial hard top. This is really cheap. This is only like a five buck piece. So if I had ever mess up the top, I just take this off and put it on. That's why I'm writing out a little grid right now. So that way I can countersink. I countersink two holes, then drilled and sunk two screws to hold the top on. So that way I could get the screws on. As you can see, this is not glued. You can pull it off at any point and it's a $5 fix. So that way you never are really losing anything on your workbench. Great way to go. Now that we've laid out of our top basically is done, we need to flip this guy over because we're going to start working on the frame that goes under the top. Take all of your 2x4s and stick them out. You want to find the, the straightest ones because I don't have a jointer or anything. So I'm just picking the straightest ones in order to go because I want the top to be the best quality because the one on the bottom of the shelf, who cares, right? So here we go. We lay these things out. Make sure to also check that all of your 2x4s are cut correctly because we got them cut from Home Depot, so they may be off by about a 16th or so. So just find the ones that all matched up the right length. Get some clamps and then at least hold the outside because that's, that trust me, if you don't use the clamps, you're gonna hate your life. Just get some of these clamps. I got a whole stack of these clamps. Uh, oh yeah, make sure that this is 100% uh, square. This is your one opportunity to make sure that all of your corners are uh, at 90 degrees. Because if the frame's correct underneath, you'll be just fine. So go around every single one of these corners and do that. Uh, again, I got all these clamps on Amazon. It was a 30 pack of these bar clamps for 120 bucks at the time. I'll put a link below. Sweet clamping, I tell you what. Now it's critically important that you countersink at each of the screws that's gonna go into the butt joint for the edge of the frame, because otherwise you will split the two x four, which is bad. Now, in order to secure the two x four frame to the top, I decided to use six inch lag bolts, okay? Because the two x fours are three and a half inches wide, and then you pop it down and you will have two and a half inches in the bottom of that three inch top. So I'm just marking out between the studs and then one in the middle of each of the runners as my spot. You can add more if you want. Anywho, just grab yourself your bit. In this case, I used three eighths inch lag bolts to so just drill out the hole that is required. And uh, I mean, I screwed up and actually used the wrong size. And then now I got it right. So there we go. Just check your bolts and make sure everything is cool. As you see, it's right in the middle. This is the middle one. Uh, and I kind of split it. So I put a little screw in there to hold it together. Now take your trusty crescent wrench. I decided, you know, use a ratchet. Uh, I suggest using the largest ratchet you have just so you have a little bit more power than more you know, leverage in order to pull the lag bolts in faster. Because I used really decent plywood and not using anything like particle board, I didn't have to like pre-drill anything. I could literally just stick the lag bolts in and it would just get shoved straight through. I think this is the most effective way to take the top and the bottom. And if at any time I want to move or change out the top or whatever, all I got to do is just unbolt it and we're good to go. Again, this thing is modular and easy to use. At this point in the construction, we need to get all of our four by fours together. So that way we can actually start putting into this thing together, at least as far as the bottom frame. So make sure that you check each of them to make sure which one is the best cut side because they got them at Home Depot cut. So they may be slightly off. Mine were off by about a 16th. Uh, so, but it doesn't matter because I'm using leveling feet anyway. So it's not going to be too big a deal. Clamp them all down because we're going to be boring holes in for carriage bolts and it's critical that they don't move at all. I decided to use carriage bolts to connect the top to the bottom of the frame. Uh, mostly because they're huge. You can see they go all the way through the two by four and the four by four. Plus they're gonna be on a screw with a washer on the other side. And as you saw, that, like, that screw is way too small. It's only about an inch. I'll use that on the shelf below, but not on the top. So mark down about one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom. So that way you'll have about half, about half an inch, an uh, inch and a half in the middle where they're not gonna be hitting. You do not want both of those carriage bolts hitting each other while you're boring holes and then trying to shove them through. So just make sure they don't hit each other. Now when you're boring, make sure you use a really long boring bit. And in this case, this is one that's like about 12 inches long. I got it at a uh, Home Depot because I needed it. 3 8 bit. Make sure you pull out the boring bit all the time to kind of clear it because the 4x4 in this case was really wet. Uh, as you see it blew out the back, just cut off those things that way they don't get caught in the threads of the carriage bolt. Now jam that carriage bolt in and 
put on your washer. And if you're stupid like me and didn't put the, uh, yeah, the washer on before you put the nut on, then, you know, you take it right back off, put the washer on, and then put the nut back on. Do that for each of the corners. Now, if you've done everything correctly, you should be able to take these clamps off, and that leg should have no play in it. Otherwise, if it's got a little play into it, make sure you tighten those bolts a little bit more. But as you see, good to go. Uh, looking at the plans, we see... Oh, wait a second. Would you turn that over, dude? Would you not... Thanks. That's how it's supposed to look, at least right now. Now, let's start getting that lower shelf in line. So, I measured actually up 24 inches, because remember, the, the top... I don't think it was totally even or level, so if I decided to take it from the bottom up, I can guarantee that my measurements are going to be 100% on. Once again, we're going to rely on our clamps to hold the stuff up for us. Now grab all your leg material and just clamp them up there. I, I love these freaking bar clamps. If you, you go get these immediately. It's 120 bucks. you get 30 of them, and they work actually really, really well. It's going to hold up there, and we're also going to start leveling it, because I want to make sure that everything was 24 inches from the top to the bottom, so before we start to screw them together. Yep, we're gonna screw them, not use carriage bolts on the bottom. Uh, I didn't really care about the, the bottom too much. Like the top, I wanted to critically make sure that was totally good, but this will be supported by the MDF. Uh, all I did was just make a little pattern. Uh, the middle is right at the inch and seven fit, like inch and three quarters mark, and then just made sure it was about an inch on each side and made it a cool little five star pattern. So what we're gonna do is start putting the bottom shelf in. I just wanna measure while I'm out here. I just wanna see how deep from the edge to the back side of the four x four is. In this case, it was five inches because you got a one and a half inch on the two x four and three and a half inches on the four x four. So as you can see, now we take that combination screw. You gotta get a combination square. If anything, get these, they're like 13 bucks at Home Depot and it's, it's great. You can mark, heads in the way, dude. Okay, sorry. Uh, five inches, five inches, 100% square, 90 degrees and cut that. The next step in the process is we need to bore out the legs in order to put the leveling feet on. The problem is I got to get it off of this folding table and onto the ground. It was a little more heavy and difficult than I thought it would be, but hey, you know, that, that's okay. I'm doing a little sleep. I've been using actually the MDF on the shelf on the non-showing side just as a base. So here is our 4x4. We're going to use our combination square because it has a 45 degree on it, which is why, again, you need to buy a damn combination square because they are spectacular. Do it from edge to edge on one edge and edge to edge on the other, and you will find the midpoint, which is where we're going to drill. Now, take your drill first and get a collar, and these collars are the way to go. See how far I need to take that in. Don't make it any further than you absolutely have to, because uh, I want to make sure to make as much rigidity in the wood as possible. So we bring the collar up to right at the edge of that foot, and we're good to go. So that will stop the hole. Use your bit. In this case, it was uh, actually, this was probably the easiest hole I've ever made. It was spectacular to bore. Uh, pull all the shavings out as they come out and you'll have your stop boom perfect so take your now there's a little um, like a t-nut is what they call it you bang that in with the hammer and then we'll screw in our leveling feet these feet should probably work out okay if they don't well whatever it was only seven or eight bucks from woodcraft so they should work out fine in order to cut the MDF, I want to actually use the workbench as, hey, hey, a workbench in order to facilitate my cutting, which means we then have to put it on its, well, it's where it's supposed to be. So just watch your back and lift with your legs so you don't hurt yourself. As you see here, there is a bit of wobble in the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's why you need those leveling feet, so that way you can have a nice level field to work on. So to christen this new workbench, the first thing we're going to do is take our MDF and clamp it to the work surface so that way we can have a nice solid place in which to saw. Now it was late at night so I didn't have the ability to use a power tool and I'm using the wrong kind of saw which is a pole saw. Wouldn't recommend that as you have to keep blowing it, pulling all the stuff off. Plus I'm wearing a dusk mask because MDF has formaldehyde into it. Not a good plan for tasty things. Hey, all four corners are now cut. Let's go put this thing in the workbench and finish this kit up. All right, we're going to kind of, oh, w wait, damn, it, it, it doesn't fit. Shoot, well, I guess we'll have to fix something, huh? Okay, well, why don't you fix it, dude? So in order to better let us put the shelf in, I'm decided to bisect it, but it's well, obviously bisecting is cutting it in half uh, and uh, clamping it up to our work surface again to give us a place to use. I'm using an actual crosscut saw rather than a stupid pole saw this time. And get in there, cut it in half, and uh, it should be pretty easy. Uh, so easy. I didn't even show you how I did it. And there's the two halves. Yay! So one half goes in. Yeah, just bang it down. If it's nice and tight, then good to go. Uh, ooh, little gap in there, but eh, it's all good. It's just a lower fence. Eh, Good enough government work. 
So the rigidity of our base is gonna come from screwing this MDF into the bottom frame. So just take some one and a half inch drywall screws, drive them in there, and make sure to countersink it so that way there's nothing to hook on when you start putting your tools and storing stuff down on the shelf. With that, there's a $150 workbench that you can use right now. I mean, this is just stuff you can buy at Home Depot, really easy, and I mean, I use just basic tools to construct this thing. Now, is, is it totally level? Is it totally planed out? Is everything perfect? Perfect on it? No, but this is extremely sturdy and will serve you in order to build the next workbench or your other projects, just everything in general. So I'd suggest just trying it out. It's 150 bucks. The plans are in the destruction or the destruction. The plans are in the description below, and I, I hope you all enjoyed it. So like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about my work, or at least what you thought about the bench. So until next time, guys. Uh, see ya.